The Put Tenant in Units screen is found under the Company menu, Setup, Units and Tenants, Put Tenants in Units button. This screen is often used during the conversion process when you are putting tenants into the SiteLink program that were once in a previous software. SiteLink has many conversion tools to bring tenants over, bring units over, and put those tenants in their units automatically. Sometimes you will do this process manually if you did not have a previous software running your self-storage facility. The reason you would use the Put Tenants in Units screen as opposed to the Move-In screen is because you want to account for the fact that this person moved in possibly many years ago. They're not moving in today, which would be your typical situation. When you're in this screen, you're going to first highlight the unit that they're going to be put into. Click on the box underneath the word tenant. If it's an existing tenant that's going to be moving into a second or third unit, you're going to choose their name from this list. Typically, you're going to be clicking add because their name doesn't exist in the system. Click add and then put in the required information, name, address, city, state, zip, phone number, whatever you require for a move-in. In this particular demo, we'll just put a first and last name in. We have the name. We'll have a default gate code which could be changed. One very important point is the lease date. This is when they moved in in the past. This could be years ago. So you can use the calendar, choose when they moved in. The first unpaid rent start date. This is the next time that they're going to owe. So in this particular case, this video is being filmed in December. If they're first of the month billing, which is a choice on the left hand side, they may owe for January 1st, which would be the typical scenario in this case. If we're doing this in December, most people would have paid and they now owe for January. But you could also have people that owe you money in the past or you could have people that are prepaid. Normally you leave it as January 1. If they were prepaid, you would move that date forward. Maybe they're paid and the next time they owe is March 1st, then change that date. If they owe for a previous time period, we could leave it as January 1st as the next unpaid charge date and then we can put in the previous fees which I'll mention in a moment. So the typical scenario they owe as of January what is the rent? This is picking it up from the default value of the unit itself. If they're being charged lower than the default value then change it. Maybe they're getting it for 90 rather than 100. We could change it here. Whether or not we want to tax rent. What is the next unpaid rent charge? It's 90 here. Did they have a deposit that was paid? If so, maybe they paid a month's worth of deposit. I could put that in as 90. It's not going to expect payment, but it'll show that they've paid a deposit historically so that if they moved out, it will prompt to give money back for that particular person. Do they have an insurance balance? Do they have a late fee balance? Do they have any other fee balance? There may not be in this case. It might just be that they owe $90 as of January 1. But what if it was a person that also owed for December? Well, we could leave it as January 1st and then put in a fee balance. Maybe they had a fee balance of a given amount, $20 for a fee. They might have had a late fee balance. If they had a late fee balance and we click on the amount, it will automatically create late fees based on your default late fee schedule and when their rent is undue. So for example, if we put the unpaid rent start date as December 1st, once SiteLink does a start of day process, it's going to automatically calculate late fees. Most people, what they'll do if the person only owes for a month or two, they'll put in this scenario the start date as January 1 and then put in a fee balance to cover anything that was owed prior to January 1st. That's the quickest way to do it. Now, what if you had someone that was partially paid for January? So by default, if we put the start date as January 1, and they owe us $90. Well, maybe they had paid $10 of January. Well, we could put a credit balance of 10 here. So now they'd be charged 90 for January 1, but a credit balance of 10. Therefore, they would owe 80 in that scenario. If someone is prepaid, if we put the first charge date in the future, March 1st, it will show uh, in SiteLink that they're prepaid when we click on the prepaid rent value. By clicking on the prepaid rent, it's showing that they've paid for December in this case, January and February. Click OK. It will have them prepaid on all the reports. Again, 
put the start date as for unpaid rent as March 1st, it will calculate prepaid rent prior to March 1st. If we don't put in a value for prepaid rent here, it will again show them as March 1st, but it would not show them as prepaid historically because you have to remember that in SiteLink, in this scenario, we don't have the histories of this particular person. You're putting in someone into the system that's existed for you potentially for many years, but SiteLink doesn't know that they paid X amount of dollars three months ago, that they had a late fee five months prior. You're going to put in those values here. We can put if someone's first of the month or anniversary, whether or not they're residential or commercial, what their billing type is, typically that would be monthly, whether or not they're sent an invoice, whether or not they're charged an invoice fee, what are their invoice days. These are all typical choices during a normal move-in, what their gate time zone is and keypad zone is. Once we have this account set up the way we want it, we'll click Save. Are you sure you want to save these settings and complete this move-in? Yes. And now this person is put into the unit.